Over the years, I've had many viewers of my electronics and do-it-yourself repair videos ask me to recommend a good, low-cost digital multimeter with a wide range of functions. At the time, I recommended the Must Tool digital multimeter that you've seen in many of the videos on my channel and has been reliable for years, but I just purchased another digital multimeter that I feel is even better than the Must Tool that I use. If you're an auto or marine mechanic, electrician, handyman, electronics tech, or a person that works on or installs solar systems, then you'll definitely want this tester if low cost and functionality are your biggest concerns. As usual, a link to where I purchased this tester has been placed in the video description area. Now I'm going to try and keep this video a little short because it was an unplanned video. So I'm going to show you the tester, go over the features, and just give you a few quick demonstrations. The first thing you notice is that the tester comes in this very nice case. I have to say it's rather well made. Got the strap, zipper all the way around. And keep in mind the tester only cost 35 bucks. Let me open this up so we can take a look at it. With the case opened up you can see everything that's included with the exception of two AA batteries that I already installed in the tester. You have the manual in several different languages, well written. Included are pretty nice test probes. They're 1000 volt rated and I believe 10 amps. And you can take a look at the tip right over here. These slide off. Strictly for protection when you store it so you don't puncture the case. Also included is a number one Phillips screwdriver to let you replace the batteries if needed. Nicely designed, fits very comfortably in your hand. I'm right-handed, so you can open the clamp for AC and DC current measurements with your finger, and you could change the settings by scrolling with your thumb. If you're a lefty, you can hold it this way, and then you could probably control it with this finger, or you could just use your right hand to change the settings. On both sides of the unit is a rubberized area, and on the back is where the screw is to replace the batteries. On the very top of the unit, right over here, is an LED, so it has a built-in flashlight. Keep in mind, it's not very bright, it's just an added feature. If you're working in a tight space, it'll give you some light in the area, so you can clamp onto a wire for current measurement. And not only is the flashlight useful if you're trying to clamp around wires inside of a panel, but you notice the very end has this probe that sticks out, and what that is, is an AC voltage sensor. So you can take this tip, put it right against the wire inside that notch, and if the wire is live, you're going to see an indication on the display, and it's also going to beep. This meter has several different functions. The first one over here is volts. Roll it to there. And as you can see, it's on the auto range. It says DC volts. Down here it says millivolts. And if you push this button right over here, this would turn on the flashlight and you can see it lighting up my finger. It's not super bright, but it is enough in total darkness to see what you're doing. Turn that off. If you push over here where it says hold, that will freeze the display. You push it again. And if you push it and hold that button, it lights up the display. If you push the selection button, you can switch between DC and AC. Now we're on AC and it is true RMS. It's on auto and you can just push between, goes back and forth. The next spot when you rotate the knob puts us on the low Z setting, also known as low impedance. And that setting is used to look for ghost voltage or phantom voltage. So let me explain what I'm talking about. You may end up with the reading displayed on the meter of around 120 volts or 220 if that's what you're checking. But the problem is when you plug something into the receptacle, it does not power up. What that is is a phantom voltage or a ghost voltage. And the way to test, you would put this on the first setting over here, AC voltage, and you would measure. And if you see 120, you would move it to the next setting, which is the low Z, and you would measure between the exact same points if you don't get 120, if you get 12 or 40 or 50, you're going to know a ghost voltage is present. You can have a lot of wires very close together, such as inside of a conduit over here, 
And the wires being that close together with current flowing can induce currents into the nearby wires. And it's called capacitive coupling. So for a capacitor, you have metal plates that are very close together but not touching. And the way to prevent them from touching would be to use a dielectric material that's very thin in between the two plates. So to demonstrate, we could just take a piece of tape and of course the tape would have to cover the entire surface. And then once that's on, the other plate would be pushed very tight against it. So if there was a charge on the plate on the bottom side, it would transfer to the top side. And it's the same way when you have two wires very, very close together with current flowing. Currents can be induced into this wire from the live wire that's next to it. It's a useful setting to have. You may not use it often, but it will rule out ghost voltages, also known as phantom voltages, if you come across them. The next position brings us over to ohms, continuity, diode, and capacitance. Right now we're on the auto range for resistance. It says mega ohm. So let's take a 10 mega ohm resistor and connect it. 10.45 mega ohm. And the response was very fast. And I think it has plus or minus 5%. So that reading would be accurate. Push this over here. Select. Diode. Forward voltage of 0.443. And when you switch the probes around, you should get nothing. And there you go. Nothing. So that diode is good. Next setting. Continuity. When you touch the probe tips together, the alarm will sound. And it's pretty instantaneous. No delay. The one thing about my must tool, there is a slight delay when you touch the tips together. This one is fast. So right here is a fuse. You want to check the fuse. We know current is flowing across the fuse that it's not blown. You can also check switches out. Right here. One position. Nothing. You know the switch works fine. Push this one more time. And now we're going to be measuring capacitance. Before measuring a capacitor, you want to make sure the discharge and you also want to short them out just to ensure there's no charge because you do not want to damage the meter. This one is roughly 3.7 microfarad. Let's go like this. three point eight three nine the next setting is Hertz or duty cycle take the two probe tips and you're going to insert them into the AC receptacle or any other point where AC voltage is present so let's do that first slide that one in and let's slide this one in 59.94 Hertz very close to that 60 and you can also zero the setting out if you wanted before performing the test if you have a small electronic circuit with a 555 timer and you want to take a look at the duty cycle for the pulses, you would simply connect this to the output and you would push the select button to switch it to percentage and the duty cycle would be displayed. Now for the last two tests, we're going to take a look at AC amps first, then DC amps, and then I'm going to show you that the no contact voltage sensor works very well. For the AC current test, we're going to be taking a look at how much current is flowing through each leg of the AC line on my home. For the DC current demonstration, I have my lithium iron phosphate battery connected up to the inverter that you see right here that was tested in a previous video. And you can see the varying levels of current based on the settings of the hair dryer. And for the last demonstration, you can see the no contact voltage sensor works very well. And that's it. The product is very good for the money, and I'm sure you'll be extremely satisfied if you decide to buy one. Thank you very much for watching.